everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today we are going to be readdressing one of the most hotly contested points in my harsh writing advice video, and that is, is writer's block real? And as you might know, in that video I say, writer's block isn't real! And here's the thing, yes and no, I said what I said, I do believe what I believe, however, I think it's important to understand context, and yes, we are going to have a lovely discussion about the concept of writer's block and what it means to be blocked. Blocks in your writing are real. I don't believe in subscribing to the concept of writer's block because I think it holds writers back. So that is what we are going to talk about. So that harsh writing advice video that I made like two years ago, first of all, it had a very particular tone. It was meant to be a little bit kind of scrappy and in your face. I even say that in the video that it's it's kind of a bit dramatic on purpose, partly because the intended audience for that video, which is other than the writers who know what they're doing and want to watch an amusing, sassy listicle, is newbie writers who have a certain amount of kind of ego about writing and publishing, a kind of lack of realistic expectations about writing and publishing, and it's in the subtitle of the video that it's mostly for newbie writers. It really is for that specific kind of writer. And when I do speak to this kind of writer, and again that video was also inspired by Reddit, and this is where I see it a lot, it is definitely true that the idea of writer's block saying, I have writer's block, is something that consistently holds back newer writers, and they essentially use writer's block as a straw man, as an excuse for why they just can't write. And so that is where my harsh writing advice comes from, my salty opinion that writer's block is not real. What I mean by that is the concept of writer's block and the way that people use it as an excuse for not writing is not real. Why? Because professional writers don't get writer's block. We can't get writer's block. Professional writers, serious writers even, you can't use writer's block as an excuse to write, meaning you can't always wait for inspiration to write. You can't wait for perfect creative moods to write. You learn to write as a habit. You learn to push through blocks and barriers. Thus, writer's block as we kind of treat it in culture, especially in writer's culture, is not real. However, Mental blocks in writing are 100% real. Creative blocks in writing are 100% real. And <laughs> you're like, wait, but you just said. So separate writer's block as a concept from these other things. And it's these other things that I want to talk about, these very realistic blocks that every writer does run into. But I'm going to talk about what we do when we run into those blocks, how we overcome those blocks, and recognizing the difference between well, I'm gonna go through them, but things like I'm feeling lazy versus I just need a good idea versus I am having a legitimate mental health block slash crisis and I need to self-care and take a break from writing because they are very, very different. Essentially, you have to learn to recognize the difference between a temporary block that can be pushed through, a serious block that maybe needs some kind of techniques to push through it, might take a little longer, and a serious block that you need to take seriously, put the writing aside, not guilt yourself for not doing the writing, and take care of yourself. So here's how I think of blocks. First, I ask myself when I'm feeling blocked, when I feel like I don't want to write or I can't write, am I being lazy? This is always the first question I ask myself because often you just don't feel like writing. And sometimes that is completely legitimate and you don't have to write. Hopefully no one is holding a gun to your head to write. But just as often it is very productive and useful to learn to push past this kind of block, the lazy block or the I'm too tired block or I don't feel like it block, because that is how you develop writing habits, that's how you train yourself, your brain, you train your creative self in, as well, to push through and write even when you don't feel like it because when you are on deadline and you're a professional writer, you're not gonna feel like writing a lot of the time. And there might not be a literal gun to your head, but there is a metaphorical one when you have a deadline. So it is important to kind of train yourself to recognize when you just don't feel like it and then you do it 
anyway. Now, I know what some of you are gonna say. You're gonna say, but isn't writing that you make yourself write, that you force yourself to write, that is uninspired? Isn't it not going to be writing that's as good because it's uninspired? No. Uh, first of all, if it's really bad, if you just write trudging awful stuff during one of those sessions, you will edit it later. But most often what I find is pushing through the I don't feel like it or I don't feel inspired when I sit down and force it, like kind of really push myself, challenge myself, uh, I find that inspiration. And very often the, the hardest writing sessions can produce some of my favorite writing. The thing about inspiration, which I also said in that harsh writing vice of video, and I will repeat myself, is inspiration is for people who don't finish books. That is if you wait for it to come to you. If you treat inspiration, especially as it relates to that concept of writer's block, as this nebulous magical thing that just descends on you and allows you to be creative. No, find the inspiration. Make the inspiration come to you. Do something in that writing session to excite you about what you're writing and then the inspiration will come. Not every writing session, that said. Some writing sessions are duds, but when you do it consistently, enough of them won't be duds and that's how we write books. So I did mention like laziness and not feeling like it and tiredness. If you're legitimately just bone tired, this will happen because of all sorts of things in your life. It could be work, it could be your family, all the responsibilities and stresses that we have. It's okay to take some time off. Try not to take too much time off, but you can skip a night if you're just legitimately about to collapse into a puddle on the floor. So the next kind of block that I have to evaluate in myself all the time is when I'm kind of buzzing with anxiety and stress. And this almost always is because of my day job for me personally. I'm actually in one of those phases right now where my day job is just bonkers. It's requiring a ton of my mental and emotional energy. And when it gets like this, we get busy seasons a, usually once or twice a year. And I always know I don't push myself to draft when that happens because it's it would just be cruel to do that. And that is when I take breaks. That's the kind of block where, yeah, it is a mental block. It is an emotional block. And you give yourself permission until it passes. By the way, this is why if you have a job like that where it's like that all the time, some jobs just are not conducive to also being productively creative in the rest of your life. And that's why many of us have to get particular kinds of jobs so that we can also balance our writing. And happily for me, it's only a couple times a year with my job. And what feeds into this is that super critical mental health break. And sometimes this is the stress and the anxiety that's going to come from a really high challenge impact part of your life, day job, family, other stresses, etc. And this is when you, for your mental health, for your physical health as well, because pushing yourself too hard also impacts your physical health. It, this is legit when I don't just mean a, like a break, like a few weeks. This can mean months of not writing. And the thing is, that is not wasted time. I think people guilt themselves when they do this, but it's not wasted time because inevitably you're going to do some of the other things I'm going to suggest for the next block type. You're just going to do it across a longer period of time. So the next kind of block that I have definitely fallen into, that we all fall into, a natural, normal kind of block that doesn't hold you back forever, which is why it's not writer's block. Uh, when you can't figure out the story, when there's something that's holding you back from starting, this is a starting block, it usually means, so I am a discovery writer, planter, I fall in the middle. I can't know nothing, but I can't plan everything ahead of time. And I'll sometimes hit a block where I know I haven't, brainstormed quite enough. There's some missing element that is holding me back from being able to pants my story. So when that happens, first I challenge myself to figure out what the heck it is. I, I have written enough books where I can actually figure it out, but sometimes you won't necessarily know what that is. I'll tell you for me very often, it always has to do with uh, internal story logic or character motivation, almost always, not having some essential part of that figured out. So this is where it's a tool you can use when you're also just taking a longer break. Um, I call it refilling the well. So this is when you have to just watch TV shows and watch movies and read books. I actually tend to read a lot of nonfiction during these periods when I'm just blocked on how to start a story or how to continue, which is the next kind of block, though. Hmm, separate solution for that as well. Uh, so 
ingest. You're just ingesting. You're taking care of yourself. You're feeding yourself things that you like, things that are interesting. And if you are ingesting the right things, you do have to be smart about the tone, genre, etc. of things that you are ingesting. Sometimes you'll just, you'll have that brainwave. They come to me in the shower a lot. I don't know why. Or right before I'm going to bed. It's basically nourishing yourself creatively so that you can figure out what that missing piece is and then make yourself do the rating. Now, if this just persists and persists and persists, you might not be ready to write the story, period. It might be an idea rather than a plot, etc. So in that case, sometimes it means you actually have to try writing something else. So just be aware that in this kind of block, sometimes it's your brain. Again, it's not writer's block that means you can't write, but it can be those mental creative blocks telling you it's not your, this story isn't ready, try something else. So the next kind of block is when you're already writing a story and you don't know what you're going to do next, or you sit down for the day or multiple days in a row and you're in a scene or a chapter and you just don't know what to do. This is maybe more of a pantsing problem than perhaps outliners have this as well when they're working on their outline. This one is tricky, but this is where I personally find it is especially important to remind yourself that writer's block isn't real. This is where I find the concept of writer's block holds people back the most. When you hit that first big story block, so often it comes in act two, so often it's after like 10,000 or 20,000 words. This is when it's especially important not to tell yourself the lie that there's this mystical outside force that is causing you to not right, because it means you're not going to do what you have to do to push through this particular kind of block. Much like with starting the story, I find 90% of the time, my problem here is that I am missing something with character. There is a character I do not understand enough to move forward because I can't figure out what choice they would make in a scene. I can't figure out how they would respond to another character or how, if it's my main character, I don't know how this other character who's supposed to interact with my character, what would they even say? So this is where I will take short, short breaks to do character work, especially when this has happened to me. And I think this is why it happens in act two. It isn't always your main character. You often kind of have them figured out by the time you get there. It is other characters. I find this happens, especially with antagonists. That is when, yeah, take a break. If you didn't do it beforehand, or if you did it beforehand and whatever it is, isn't clicking, it can also mean that you have to backtrack and redo something. This is going to depend on your writing process, but take that time. Really think about backstory. Think about motivation. Think about personality traits. Let's say something isn't working. So think I need them to go in this direction. Well, I have this person here, but clearly something isn't working. What could I tweak about them? What minor but major shift could I make? And what would the ripples of that change be? And just do that mental exercise. It could even be some writing exercises of what those ripples would be to changes you make in the story, to new decisions you make in the story. And nine times out of 10, it's gonna unlock and click something for you. You're gonna go, aha! And that's going to be the direction that helps you move forward. So this can mean it's a couple days of work, at most a couple weeks to kind of reset and rejig. And the important thing is, to actually start writing again, to force yourself through the process. You're not waiting for inspiration to come. You are taking concrete steps to force yourself to be inspired, to force yourself to have a brainwave. Now, I almost never backtrack. I find that backtracking tends to kill my motivation. But for some writers out there, this can also be the moment where you realize, oh, I made the wrong choice 5,000 words ago, and you can go back, fix it, and then move forward. For some people, that is what is gonna unstick the block. It's really gonna depend on you as a writer. And every once in a blue moon, it does mean that you, maybe the story itself isn't working and you have to start something else. And then something I do want to point out is that it's also very, very normal to go long stretches of time without writing anything, without actively working on any kind of book. I found that this happens for me and other people that I know after a major setback, for example, when you don't get an agent for a project, when you don't sell a book on submission, or also I've had this happen to me just essentially book burnout after working really, really hard on a book, like writing the second book and editing it for my publisher. I took a long break after that. I've ended up on a pretty long break after drafting the Ivies, though in fairness, there was a lot of editing in there, but meaning it is normal 
to take six months, sometimes even a year off from actively drafting projects. I've gone 18 months before and I don't consider that writer's block. So I just want to put it out there that is very normal taking a break between books time. So at the end of the day, what I just want you to take away is that I'm not this evil person sitting here screaming at you that writer's block isn't real and that you're garbage if you feel blocked to write. Being blocked to write is normal, but giving in to the concept of writer's block, writer's block is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because when you tell yourself, especially as a newer writer, that you can't write, you're not gonna write. You're not even gonna try to write. You're not gonna ask yourself why you're not writing or take any steps to fix it or indeed train yourself to write when you don't feel like it. That's why I tell a kind of hard line on writer's block, at least for newer writers. Because the thing is, like, once you get in the groove of writing and you've written some books and you've written a few books and you know yourself as a writer, you do recognize what your different block types are, when they constitute a total break, when they constitute moving on from a project, etc, etc, so on and so forth. But I just find it's dangerous to allow <laughs> new writers to go, oh, I have writer's block, because then, like, they don't write for three years and they're telling you about this book they've been working on for 10 years and they're like, I just don't understand. I can't finish a book and you're sitting sitting over here like, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that is the real tea on how I feel about writer's block. I tell a hard line and throw in some comedic effect because I'm trying to help writers kind of help themselves to write books. But let's discuss this down below in the comments. I might have missed some block types. I mean, I went over the ones that I have definitely experienced, or you can talk about some of your experiences with so-called writer's block. How do you push through blocks in your writing and creativity? And give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more discussion style videos on the channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I post two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.